Hi, welcome to New Beginnings Monthly Monday Night Bible Study. I'm not Kyle, Sharon Galnett, and I'm bringing to you a Bible study that I wrote as a final project in my associate degree for Biblical Studies through Colorado Christian University. The title of our study over the next few months is Finding God's Loyal Love in the Book of Ruth. So today we're just going to be setting the stage out of Ruth 1, 1. There's a lot packed into just one little verse. I promise it will get faster. Um, but this week, we are going to see how the history of the Israelites points us to the theme of the book of Ruth. We're going to define the theme of God's loyal love for the Israelites. And we're going to find this loyal love extended to all of mankind and to identify God's loyal love in our own life today. There are many classic stories which we recognize immediately from their opening lines. I was born. We recognize that from Dickens' David Copperfield. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. We recognize that as Dickens' work also in The Tale of Two Cities. And in the book of Ruth, Ruth 1.1 says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land. The book of Ruth is tucked in the Bible between Judges and 1 Samuel and is a bridge between two separate time phases in the history of the Israelites. It's thought to have been written around 1100 BC and it is evident that it was written after the birth of David as he is mentioned in the final genealogy listing at the end of the book. There's no concrete evidence of who exactly is the author of the book of Samuel. Some scholars believe that it was written by Samuel. Some think it, it was written by a woman who was considered very wise. Some believe it was written by a man with knowledge and understanding of women's issues in the, that time and culture. But largely it is listed as a book with an unknown author. The book of Ruth is a narrative written in the style of a four-point play. And if you notice as we go along, there's a lot of little theater titles related titles to our study as we go along through each lesson. It's a narrative of the Israeli history. It includes a cast of characters whose meanings and names that while real and uncannily fitting to their role in the narrative. The book of Ruth has a plot full of highs and lows and fears, joys, tears, happiness. There is conflict that needs overcome. There's struggles and life and death fears, disappointment, and there's principles that are rele relevant to all of humanity. There's a climatic ending that has meaning to the main character, Naomi. It has support uh, meaning to the supporting characters of Ruth and Boaz and to the Israelites and to us today. The theme in the book of Ruth is God's loyal love for the Israelites through Naomi's eyes. The Hebrew word used to describe this loyal love is hesed. This loyal love is a love that mothers give to their children. What loving mother forgets to feed her child? What loving mother would not protect her child? What loving mother would not teach her child to be obedient and respectful? What loving mother would not want her child to succeed and have all that they could have? This hesed or loyal love of God is the main theme of the book of Ruth and our study over the next few weeks. This hesed, or loyal love of God, is shown in the keeping of the covenant God made with the Israelites. The narrative in the book of Ruth falls between the Mosaic and the Davidic covenants. The Mosaic covenant was given to Moses at Mount Sinai, post-Egyptian slavery, as a blueprint for conduct and order for the Israelites in the Promised Land. It was not a way of salvation, but it was set forth to separate them from the pagan nations surrounding them. It also set forth conditions and consequences according to obedience or disobedience of the Israelites to God's laws. The Mosaic Covenant shows a foundation of the cycles of God's blessings and judgment to the Israelites. And it can be found in Exodus 19 and 24 and also in Deuteronomy 28 to 29. The Davidic covenant is a continuation of the previous covenants to the Israelites. It states that a descendant of David's line would reign over God's people. 
that land would be secured for them, that descendants for their nation would not cease, blessings and cursing and curses would continue conditionally. The Davidic covenant brings hope that a Messiah would come, and it can be found in Second Samuel chapter seven. The narrative of Ruth prompts us to find out what happened, what is happening, what's going to happen, and how does any of it relevant to us today. So what happened before this was the Mosaic Covenant, just a quick review, that they would have a homeland in the Promised Land and that they would be a united nation in that homeland. God chose leaders at this time. Moses was the first leader who led them from Egypt to just outside the Promised Land. But because of his disobedience, Moses could not lead them into the Promised Land. Joshua was a leader following Moses who led the leaders the Israelites into the promised land, led victorious battles to conquer that land, and divided the land among the 12 tribes. Bethlehem is one of our towns that is listed in our story of Ruth, and it belonged to the tribe of Judah. And there's a homeland of Elimelech and Naomi. Moab, where they traveled, um, was inhabited by ancestors of Lot's son through his daughter, was considered an enemy of Israel. And although the Israelites were forbidden to intermarry among certain tribes, they were only forbidden to form friendships with the Moabites. And there was a stipulation that there would be no worship with the, between the Moabites and the Israelites for 12 generations. It was a country that was pagan in worship. It had a history of war with Israel, but at the time of the narrative of Ruth, the Moabites and the Israelites were at peace. The setting is in the time of the judges. And this was a politically chaotic, socially, morally chaotic time. There was no central government or laws. And each man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. We find that verse in Judges 21, 25, and that's how the book of Judges closes. It opens, Ruth opens in 1, 1, saying that Elimelech and Naomi took their sons to Moab. They did what they thought was right in their own eyes. They left to escape a famine in Bethlehem. And famine in the Bible times often signified judgment of Israel's disobedience to his laws. During our intermission between now and next month, I would ask that you maybe just read it through the book of Ruth, looking for any history that you can find that would point to God's has said love. Are there cycles of obedience and disobedience that we can find in this book that may be a precursor to what is going to happen. And how does the time of the judges compare and contrast to our political and social culture of us today? And in your personal reflection time, I would ask that you ask yourself, where or what in my own history points me to the Hesed loyal love of God? Hi, welcome to New Beginnings Monday Night Bible Study. Ready for week two of the study of the book of Ruth, finding God's loyal love throughout the book of Ruth. This week we're going to be meeting the cast of the story of Ruth. We're going to see that God uses ordinary people to show how he extends his love to mankind. We're going to see how that we as individuals are important to God and how our choices reflect our obedience or disobedience to God. We're going to see how God shows his has said love in our ordinary lives today. The cast of the book of Ruth um, is full of interesting characters whose meanings of their name at this time are uncannily fitting for their role in the story. Now, meanings of names in this time were highly important. The meaning of one's name was known by others, so when you were introduced to somebody, they knew who you were, what you were like. And so, let's begin meeting these characters. Elimelech 
was the husband to Naomi. Um, his name means God is king. And it's an example of a name built on a description of God's characters. He did not live up to his name's meaning with his move to heathen Moab. He didn't live up to his name's meaning when he tried to provide for himself by going to Moab rather than trusting God as his king to provide for him. He died in while they lived in Moab. Naomi, the narrative in the book of Ruth is from Naomi's view. She is the main character in the story. She was the wife and the widow of Elimelech. Her name means my pleasantness. This is an example of a character description of the person. Upon her return to Bethlehem, she wished to be called Mara, which means bitterness. Malan was the son of Elimelech and Naomi and his name means failing. This is an example of a name resulting from a birth circumstance. It, he was Ruth's first husband, and he also died in Moab. Kilion was a son of Elimelech and Naomi. His name means sickly. This is also an example of a name resulting from a birth circumstance. He was a husband of Orpah, and he also died in Moab. Ruth was a native to Moab, married to Malan, while they lived in Moab. Her name means friendship. This is also an example of a character description of the person. She left Moab as a widow with Naomi to travel back to Bethlehem and accepted Yahweh as her God. She married Boaz in Bethlehem and was the mother to Obed. Orpah was also a native in Moab and married Kilan in Moab. Her name means neck, and this is an example of a name that describes physical beauty. She stayed in Moab when Naomi left. And as an aside note, Oprah Winfrey was originally to be named Orpah, but a misspelling on her birth certificate resulted in the name of Oprah instead. Boaz was a wealthy landowner in Bethlehem. Um, some translations specifically mention his wealth and some just allude to it. He was a kinsman of Elimelech. His name means strength. It's also an example of a character description. He redeemed the land for Naomi and Ruth and married Ruth and was the father of Obed. Obed was the son of Ruth and Boaz. He was a grandson of Naomi and his name means servant. He was the father of Jesse and the grandfather of King David. There is one other character in the story of Ruth who plays an important part, but is not named in the Bible. And he is the unnamed first in line kinsman redeemer, willing to redeem the land for Naomi, but he changed his mind in discovering that that included marrying Ruth he was afraid it would jeopardize his own family line. And the fact of the unnamed man in the Bible is significant related to a law found in Deuteronomy 25 that if a kinsman redeemer does not redeem the land, his name will be forgotten. So what is a kinsman redeemer? The term is Goel, one who delivers or rescues. It is a redeemer of a property or a person. Now we find that Yahweh is Israel's redeemer. He is our father. He was their father, their vindicator. He delivered them, rescued them, protected them. Christ is our kinsman redeemer. He was born in human form to be related to us, to be our kinsman. He is our deliverer, our rescuer, our protector, and he is the bridegroom to the church and his bride. So that's it for this week. We've met the cast. Um, as you go through, and if you want to reread the book of Ruth, or if you haven't done that yet, we can read that um, in between now and next session. Um, pay attention to how each cast member lives up to the meaning of their name. How? Why not? Um, do you know the meaning of your own name? And, does, do you, and are you living up to the meaning of your name?
and consider how we can see God's love in just a simple name as we read through the book of Ruth. And in your personal reflection time, are you living up to the meaning of your name? Why or why not?